Well, hello, good afternoon. Thank you for inviting me to share some of this information relative to an area that has been probably in my head for a long, long time. And it's the concept, basically, that I'm going to try to relate to you in the sense of clinical experience and at the same time to show you which are the uh, elements that I think that we have to start looking at, especially because when we're dealing with these headache, facial pain patients, we know it's not a problem of age. So most of my basic patients are pediatrics. Many of them are adolescents. And I think, basically, that's the time, actually, when the problem starts. So looking at the concept that we're going to be dealing with, basically the concept of craniovertebral, craniomandibular disorders in headache patients, I think what Oliver Wendell Holmes said, if I wish to show a student the difficulties of practice, I should give him a headache to treat. And I think it's a very good starting point. Okay. So what I was trying to refer to you as the concept of craniocervical mandibular and centric relationship is the concept of congruency of joint surfaces basically for proportional growth and development. And we've seen this. And many of you have been able to contact some of these experts on the area. We've seen Dr. Okeson, specialist basically in orofacial pain, probably the person that travels all over the world trying to communicate the importance of orofacial pain. If you look at, in the center, Dr. Terry Tanaka, his specialty initially as a nathologist, very important person related to occlusion, temporomandibular joint and anatomy. And here is Roccobato trying to say, well, don't forget the cervical spine. Surfaces. And you put two convex joint surfaces in contact. The first thing you have to realize is that this is unstable. But not only unstable, but if they glide in opposite direction, What is that? It's a grinding joint. So whenever you have two convex joint surfaces functioning together, they become unstable and they become a grinding joint. So you have to realize that what we're dealing here is with something that is very simple. Because if you look at the body of C2, to the posterior wall of C7. And you see that all the vertebral bodies are in front of that line in a slight extension. So when we analyze then this situation in pediatric population with these patterns of headaches, frontal, occipital, orbital pain, temporal pain, etc., of cervical origin, what do we find? that the cranium is posteriorly rotated. Loss of space between occipital and atlas, or C1 or C2, the craniovertebral angle is decreased and the cervical lordosis is lost with a straight spine or an inverted spine. These were orthodontic children being treated orthodontic? They were children, these were children that went to the orthodontic department for treatment, prior to treatment. They were screened for orthodontic procedures. So if you look at this pediatric case, and you follow this observation, the craniovertebral angulation is decreased, the spaces between occipital and atlas are decreased, and the cervical spine lordosis is lost. If you look at this x-ray on this adult patient, you see that the space between occipital and atlas is decreased, the craniovertebral angle is also decreased and the lower cervical spine is inverted because the, vertebra, the vertebras are behind the line between C2 and C7. 
If I see this, and I compare this as a progression, and you look at this pediatric cervical spine then again, and now you look at this progression of this cervical spine, what calls your attention? These spaces are decreased, and the lower cervical spine has a loss of cervical lordosis as a pediatric case, and this patient has a loss of cervical lordosis. <laughs>